Welcome back to the lecture series of analysis of algorithms. In today's session, we will be looking into the analysis of non-recursive algorithms. So, we will start with very simple algorithms and at the end of the session, we will see some difficult problems. We have a program here. Let us assume we want to represent the running time of this program in big O notation. The program name is add 5 times and it takes an input parameter n. Also, the program has a for loop with the variable i which moves from 1 to 5. Now, to find out the running time of a program, we assume the program is ran on a theoretical machine called RAM or random access machine where each instruction takes one unit of time. So, in this program, the first instruction sum equal to 0 takes one unit of time and this for loop it takes six units of time because the for loop runs from i equal to 0 to 5 and then the value of i will become 6 and it is greater than 5. Right? So, the instruction takes 6 units of time. Now, sum equal to sum plus n, this instruction is inside the for loop, so it takes 5 units. The last instruction, return sum, is getting executed only once and it takes 1 unit of time. So, we need to add all these values to get the total running time. Adding all these values will get 13 units. It is important to note that the running time of this program is 13 units which is independent of the input argument n. So, whatever may be the size of the input, this algorithm is always going to take only 13 units of time. That is, the algorithm's time complexity here is constant. We represent this as order of 1. So, the complexity of this particular program here is order of 1. We have two programs here and we need to find out the running time of these programs. Let us see the first program. Okay. As we know, to find out the running time, we need to find out how many times each instruction is going to get executed. So, here the first instruction sum equal to 0 is going to get executed exactly one time. That means it is going to take one unit of time. Now, the next instruction i is equal to 1, it is also going to take one unit of time. Now, we have a while loop here. So, we need to find out how many times this while loop is going to get executed. So, the initial value of i, initial value of i is equal to 1. Then the value of i in each step is getting incremented as i is equal to i into 2. So, the value of i can be represented as a series 1, 2, 4, 8, etc. n. The number of terms in this series will be same as the number of times the while loop is getting executed. It is an increasing geometric progression and we have already proved that we have theta of log n terms here. So, that means the while loop is getting executed log n plus 1 time. So, I have added this additional one to take care of the one extra step for the while loop to break. Inside the while loop, we have log n for both instructions. Right? We have log n for both instructions. Now, the total running time will be 3 log n plus 3. Right? We have to add all these things. We get 3 log n plus 3. Now, we can remove the low order terms and leading constants and we can represent the running time of this program as because of log n. 
Now, there are certain interesting things we should notice. The first and second instructions were taking one unit of time, right? One unit of time. But that one is ignored while computing the big O notation. Similarly, on the while loop, we have figured it out. The number of steps is approximately log n plus 1. But this plus 1 is ignored in the big O notation. Similarly, the while loop is getting executed approximately log n steps. And inside the while loop, we have two instructions. Both were executing log n times. So, totally we have 3 log n here. But this 3 is ignored during the computation of big O notation. So, that means given a program, first we need to find out the instruction that is going to get executed most of the time. So, in this case, we can assume this is the instruction which is going to get executed most of the time. Remember, you do not need to know to compute the exact number of steps because anyway we are going to ignore some constant terms. So, you have to find out only the approximate number of steps that particular instruction is getting executed. Now, consider the second program. So, if you look for the most executed line, that will be this while loop. So, we had to find out how many times this particular while loop is getting executed. So, we start with i is equal to n. Then after every step, the value of i is getting decremented as i by 2. That means the next step, i value will become n by 2, then n by 4, up to 1. So, we have a series here. It is actually a geometric progression. And the number of terms in this series will be equal to the number of steps this while loop is getting executed. Now, if you see, this is the same series here, 1 to n, and here it is from n to 1. The only difference is here it is in the reverse order. So, the number of steps here will be equal to theta of log n and the running time of this program is equal to big O of log. Is that clear? Consider the new program here. We need to find out the running time of this program. So, we know that we had to find out the most executed instruction in this program and here it is this particular for loop. Now, we need to find out approximately how many number of times or how many steps this particular for loop is getting executed. So, initial value of i is equal to 0. Then, in every step, the value of i is getting incremented as 1. So, we have a series i is equal to 0, then 1, then 2, and up to n. Right? So, the total number of terms here will be equal to the number of times the for loop is getting executed. So, we know that we have approximately order of n terms here. So, that means this particular while loop is going to get executed order of n times. So, the running time of this algorithm can be represented as big O of n. Again, we need to find the running time of the given program. We have two for loops here and the most execute line of this program is this second for loop. So, basically we need to find out how many times this second for loop is going to get executed. Now, when i is equal to 0, the value of j in the second for loop moves from 0 to n minus 1. That means when i equal to 0, the second for loop is getting executed n times. Similarly, when i is equal to 1, again the value of j is moving from 0 to n minus 1. That means when i is equal to 1, the second for loop is again getting executed n times. So, for any value of i, 
the second for loop is getting executed exactly n times. So how many different values are possible for i? i values are 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1. So that means we can have n different values for i and for each value of i, the second for loop is getting executed n times. That means totally the second for loop is getting executed n into n that is order of n square time. We had to find out the running time of the given program. So the most executed line of this program is the second for loop. So we had to find out how many times this particular for loop is going to get executed. Initial value of i is equal to 0 and for the value of i equal to 0, the possible values of j is also 0. That means when i equal to 0, the second for loop is getting executed only one time. When i is equal to 1, the possible values of j are 0 and 1. That means the second for loop is getting executed two times. Similarly, when i is equal to 3, sorry, when i is equal to 2, the possible values of j are 0, 1, 2. That means when i equal to 2, the second for loop is getting executed three times. So this will go like this right up to i is equal to n. Now to find out how many times the second for loop is getting executed, I can add all these values, right? So I get 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n and that is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2. Then it will be equal to big O of n square. We need to find out the running time of this program. So we know that the most executed line here is this for loop. So we need to find out how many times this particular for loop is getting executed. So the initial value of i is equal to 1. Then we are checking i into i is less than n. If this condition is true, then we are incrementing the value of i is equal to i plus 1. Right? So if you see the value of i as a sequence, then it will be initial value will be 1, then 2, then 3. It's going after some time, to, the loop is going to break. At that time, let's assume the value of i is k. Right? So from this sequence, we know that the for loop is executed k times. You also know that the last value here is k. That means k into k is greater than or equal to n. Right? So let me take it as equal to n. Then k square is equal to n and k is equal to root n. So that means we have k is equal to root n. So that means this particular for loop is going to get executed root n steps. So the answer should be C. We are asked to find out the running time of the program here. So we have three loops and we know that the third loop is the most executed line of this program. So we have to find out how many times this particular line is executed. Also we know that the variables i, j, k are controlling these four loops and they are independent. So that means we can find out the running time of each loop independently and finally we can multiply those results. So if you see only this for loop, we know that k value is initially 1, right? Then next time the k value is getting incremented by 2 every time. So this is a geometry progression and the number of terms here is approximately log n. That means the third for loop is going to get executed log n times if it is run alone. Now you take the second loop here. It is moving from j equal to 1 to 
n by 2 and every time the value of j is getting incremented as j plus 1, right? So that means the second for loop alone is going to run n by 2 times. Similarly, in the first for loop, i is moving from 1 to n by 2 and every time the value of i is getting incremented as i plus plus. That means the first for loop alone is going to run n by 2 times. So to get the total value we have to multiply this 3. So we get n by 2 into n by 2 into log n. So that is equal to theta of n square log n. Right? So the correct answer is D. Here the question is to find out how many times the printf is executed and represent that value in theta notation. So here is the statement printf and we have two for loops and it is controlled by variable i and j and both are independent. Now if you consider only this for loop this for loop is going to get executed only once because of the statement break. For example, when the value of j is equal to 1, it just print the value of j and breaks. So that means this for loop is getting executed only one time. Now if you consider the first for loop, the value of i is initially 1. Then the value of i is incrementing by 1 up to n, right? So the second value will be 2, third value will be n and up to n, right? So that means this loop is getting executed n times. So total you have n into 1 that is theta of n. So the answer should be b. Consider the below algorithm where a is an n by n matrix and it is passed as a parameter to the algorithm change. So if you see we have three for loops here but you should note that the third for loop is not inside the second for loop. Right? So the most executed line of this algorithm is the second for loop. So we have to find out how many times this particular for loop is getting executed. So we know that this for loop is going to execute order of n times independently this for loop is also going to execute order of n times so total we will have order of n square time right so we have to multiply these two values so we get order of n square time so the answer should be a consider the below algorithm where a is an array with n elements and again it is passed as an argument to the algorithm change. So we have two while loops here and this particular while loop is inside the first while loop. So that means we have to find out how many times this while loop is going to get executed. So initial value of i is equal to 0 and this while loop we are checking i less than n then the value of n is modified as n by 2. Right? So the value of n is modified as n by 2. Then we are assigning the value of j is equal to 0. And in this while loop, we are checking j is less than n and every time the value of j is incremented by 1. That means when the value of n is equal to n by 2, this while loop is going to execute while loop is going to get execute n by 2 times n by 2 times now again in the next pass the value of i will be still 0 but the value of n will be n by 2 by 2 that will be n by 4 that means the while loop is going to get executed n by 4 times Again, the value of i will be 0 in the next pass. n will become n by 8 and the while loop is going to execute n by 8 times. Right? 
So that means how many times this while loop is getting executed means we have to add all these values. So we get n by 2 plus n by 4 plus n by 8 plus etc up to n by n, right? So this will be equal to n into 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus etc 1 by n. So we know that this value is approximately equal to 1 and we have proved this in the first tutorial. So the answer will be order of n. So here the question is what is the running time of the below program? So we have a very simple program here. It has only one while loop. So we have to find out how many times this particular while loop is getting executed. Okay. So initial value of i is equal to 1 j is equal to 1. Now we are checking j less than or equal to n. Then we are changing i value as i plus plus that is 2 and j value will be j plus i that is 1 plus 2. Right? This is previous value of j and new value of i. Right? So it is 1 plus 2. In the next step i value will become 3 j value will be 1 plus 2 plus 3. Again, i value will become 4 and j value will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So, after some time, the value of j will be greater than or equal to n. Right? So, we need to know at that time what will be the value of i because the value of i gives us how many times this while loop is getting executed. Right? So, assuming i is equal to k, the j value is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus up to k and it is equal to n. So we want to find out the value of k. So here we have k into k minus 1 divided by 2 is equal to n. That means k is equal to root n. So the answer should be c. Consider the program fragment below. And if t of n is the time taken for the program, then express t of n in theta notation. So, we have a program here and we know that we have to find out how many times this while loop is getting executed. Right? So, initial value of i is equal to 1, j is equal to 0. Then we are checking i less than n. If it is true, what we are doing, we are changing the value of j that will become 1. If j is equal to i, yeah, in this situation j is equal to i, then we are incrementing the value of i that is equal to 2 and updating the value to value of j is equal to 0. Right? So that means when i is equal to 1, this while loop is executed one time. Right? One time. Now see what happens when i is equal to 2. So, when i is equal to 2, j value is set to 0. So, here j plus plus, j value will become 1. If j is equal to i, no, right? So, again we are coming back to while loop without changing the value of i. Inside this we are changing the value of j. So, j value will become 2. Now, j and i are equal. So, we are incrementing the value of i. So, if you see, when i is equal to 2, this while loop got executed two times. Now, when i is equal to 3, the while loop will get executed three times. Right? So, that means number of times the while loop is getting executed will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc. up to n and that will be equal to big of n square. So, the answer should be A.